Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In the last lecture, we obtained a physical understanding of the origin of rotational spectroscopy. We saw that the energy of the jth level that is nu bar j can be expressed as b times j times j plus 1 centimeter inverse, where b is a rotational constant and j is a rotational quantum number. We can write the energies of the different rotational levels as 0, 2b, 6b, etcetera, and these energies again are in wave numbers. So, now as we have discussed, we can only get a rotational spectrum when a transition happens. We have to ask the question between which levels can the transition take place? In other words, the question is what change in rotational quantum number is allowed for a rotational transition or what is the allowed value of delta j? To answer this, we need to know the selection rules of rotational spectroscopy. So, according to born Oppenheimer approximation so we can write the wave function of the molecule that is psi as products of the electronic wave function that is psi e and the nuclear wave function that is psi n. So, for a rotational transition, the electronic state does not change. Thus, if the initial state is psi and the transition happens to a final state that is psi prime, we are interested in the transition moment integral which can be written as psi prime the dipole moment operator psi and if we expand this integral we can write as psi e star psi n prime star dipole moment integral psi e psi n d tau e d tau n. So, we should remember as in the rotational transition the electronic state does not change. So, we write this as psi e star. However, because the nuclear state changes we write psi n prime star. So, we can further write this integral as psi n prime star psi n and in bracket we will write psi e star psi e d tau e d tau n. So, the quantity in the bracket is the permanent dipole moment or mu e corresponding to the electronic state psi e. Since both psi e and the dipole moment operator depend on the nuclear configuration, the dipole moment vector mu e depends also on the nuclear configuration. So, now we can write 
the nuclear wave function as the products of the vibrational and rotational wave function. So, we can write psi n equals psi v times psi r. So, if we write that, so first of all here because this is the permanent dipole moment, we can write this expression as psi n prime star mu e psi n d tau n. So, now we will write psi n as a product of psi v and psi r. So, we will write psi v star psi r prime star mu e psi v psi r d tau v d tau r. So, the integral over the vibrational coordinates that is integration of psi v star mu e psi v d tau v, this integral yields the permanent dipole moment mu in that particular vibrational state. So, we can further write this expression as psi r prime star mu psi r d tau r. So, now we have this transition moment integral in this form that is integration of psi r prime star mu psi r d tau r. So, let us now draw this diatomic molecule in the x y z axis. So, this is our x axis, this is our y axis and this is our z axis. So, due to symmetry the dipole moment is oriented along the internuclear distance r. So, we can write this vector mu as mu x mu y mu z. If we change the coordinate axis from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates that is from x y z to r theta phi where this angle is theta and if you take a projection this angle is phi and the internuclear distance is r. So, if you make this axis transformation and solve the angular integral we can write that mu vector equals mu x mu y mu z we can write this as mu times sin theta cos phi sin theta sin phi and cos theta. In other words mu x equals mu sin theta cos phi mu y equals mu sin theta sin phi and mu z equals cos theta. So, the magnitude of mu depends on the internuclear distance r and because we can write this way or in other words we can also write like mu then some function of theta and phi. So, this integral now becomes mu integration of psi r prime star 
which is a function of theta and phi. Then we have this function of theta and phi that is the angular part of the dipole moment psi r which is a function of theta and phi d theta d phi. So, this is the final form that we obtained. The molecule has a rotational spectrum only if this integral is non-zero. Thus, the gross selection rule for obtaining a rotational spectrum is that the molecule must have a permanent dipole moment, because if this mu becomes 0, then the whole integral becomes 0. So, this should have or the molecule should have a permanent dipole moment to emit or absorb radiation in making a transition between different states of rotation. This is expected as we saw before a rotating dipole produces an oscillating electric field that can interact with the oscillating field of the light wave. Thus, homonuclear diatomic molecules which do not have a permanent dipole moment do not show rotational spectrum. The dipole moment as we know is oriented along the internuclear axis of the diatomic molecule. It can be shown that in absence of an external electric or magnetic field, the integral is only non-zero if j prime equals j plus 1, where j prime is the rotational number associated with the final quantum state and j is the rotational number associated with the initial state. Thus, the selection rule for changes in rotational quantum numbers for a diatomic molecule is delta j equals plus minus 1. So, now let us look into the transitions observed in the rotational spectrum of a diatomic rigid rotor with a permanent dipole moment. Since the selection rule is delta j equals plus minus 1, transitions like 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and so on and so forth are allowed. So, first let us look again into the energies of the different rotational energy levels. So, we know that nu bar j equals b j times j plus 1. So, now let us make a table for the energies associated with different values of j. So, let us make a table where we are putting j in one column and nu bar j in the other column. So, let us say j equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, nu bar j is 0 for j equals 1, this is 2 b. For j equals 2, if I put the value of j equals 2 in this equation, we will get 6 b. For j equals 3, we get 12 b. For j equals 4, we get 20 b. So, if we want to visualize this in terms of an energy level diagram, we can show, let us draw this energy levels. So, this is j equals 0, this is j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, j equals 4 and let us write the energies. So, this is 0, this is 2 b, for j equals 2 it is 6 b, for j equals 3 it is 12 b and for j equals 4 it is 20 b. So, we are only drawing up to j equals 4, but we can have j equals 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. So, for j equals 0, we have the energy 
to be 0 or we can say that the molecule is not rotating at all. This is because the angular momentum which is given by L equals h cross root over j times j plus 1 that angular momentum for j equals 0 is 0. For j equals 1 the energy is 2 b and a rotating molecule has its lowest angular momentum or the molecule is rotating with the lowest angular velocity. As transitions happen from one energy level to another, we can think that a rotational transition will happen from an energy level with an associated quantum number j to another level with an associated quantum number j plus 1. So, this is due to the selection rule delta j equals plus minus 1. Thus, the spectral lines correspond to energy difference of any two adjacent rotational energy levels involved in the transition. So, conventionally delta j is referred to j prime minus j double prime, where j prime is the quantum number of the upper state or the state with higher energy or the final state. And j double prime is the quantum number associated to the lower state or the state with less energy. So, now we consider differences between the adjacent levels in order to discuss the rotational spectrum. So, if we imagine the molecule to be in j equal 0 level, we can let the incident light to be absorbed to raise it to the j equals 1 level. So, the energy absorbed in wave numbers will be for this transition j equals 0 to 1, the energy absorbed will be 2 b minus 0 that is 2 b wave numbers. If now the molecule is raised from j equals 1 to j equals 2 by absorption of more energy, we see that the energy of the incident light absorbed is 6 b minus 2 b that is 4 b. So, in general for a rotational transition, from j double prime equals j to j prime equals j plus 1, we can write delta nu bar j, this is given by nu bar j plus 1 minus nu bar j, that is b j plus 1 times j plus 2 minus b j times j plus 1. So, this is if we take b and j plus 1 common, we have j plus 2 minus j that is 2 b times j plus 1. So, this is the general formula we have for a rotational transition. So, if we have let us say j double prime equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 dot dot dot, the absorption of radiation will happen at 2 b, 4 b, 6 b, 8 b, 10 b and so on. So, if we now try to plot a rotational spectrum, what we will have? We will have centimeter inverse on the x axis. So, we are plotting. So, we have some intensity on the y axis. So, let us say this is 0. So, we have first transition at 2 b, the second transition at 4 b, the third transition at 6 b, the fourth transition 
at 8 b, the fifth transition at 10 b and so on. So, this first transition comes from 0 to 1 transition, the second line comes from 1 to 2, third line comes from 2 to 3. So, we can see the jth line comes from the jth line in the spectrum comes from the transition of j minus 1 to j. In other words, a stepwise raising of the rotational energy levels results in an absorption spectrum of lines at 2 b, 4 b, 6 b, 8 b, etcetera centimeter inverse. This can also be shown in the diagram. So, we have only shown up to 1 to j equals 1 to j equals 2. Now, if you think about the transition from j equals 2 to j equals 3, the energy difference is 12 b minus 6 b, this is 6 b. So, we have the third line at 6 b. The fourth line, the energy difference is 20 b minus 12 b, that is 8 b. So, thus we should observe successive lines in the rotational spectrum, which are given by 2 b, 4 b, 6 b. Thus, there is a series of lines spaced by a constant amount and the constant separation is equal to 2 b. So, we can see 4 b minus 2 b is 2 b, 6 b minus 4 b is 2 b, 8 b minus 6 b is 2 b, 10 b minus 8 b is 2 b. So, the constant separation is 2 b centimeter inverse. Thus, from a rotational spectrum, we can find the value of b and from b, we can estimate the value of the bond length or internuclear distance using the relation between moment of inertia i and the bond length r. So, let us look into few problems to understand this concept. So, we have the first problem here. Let us consider a rotational spectrum of a diatomic rigid rotor. The spectrum is plotted in a way that wave number increases from left to right on the x axis. So, from left to right the wave number increases. The question says the third, the sixth, the eighth and the ninth lines from the left appear at 60, 120, 160 and 180 wave numbers respectively. So, let us say this is our 0. So, our first line is at 2 b. So, we have second line. So, this is first, this is second, this is my third line, my fourth line, this is my fifth line, sixth line, seventh, eighth and ninth line. So, the third line appears at 60 wave numbers. The sixth line at 120 wave numbers, the eighth line at 160 wave numbers and the ninth line as at 180 wave numbers. So, the first question we should solve is what is the value of b? So, we know that any consecutive lines they are separated by 2 b. So, we know that we have some data for these two consecutive lines that is the eighth line and the ninth line. So, we can write 2 b equals 180 minus 160 wave numbers that is 20 wave numbers. So, b is 10 wave number. So, if you want to cross check this answer. Let us say third to fourth line is separated by 2 b, fourth to fifth by 2 b and fifth to sixth by 2 b. So, the separation between the third and the sixth line is 6 b. So, we can also put 6 b equals 120 minus 60 
wave numbers that is 60 wave numbers. So, if you solve this again we get B equals 10 wave numbers. So, we can just make sure our earlier result was right and the value of the rotational constant B that we need to find out is 10 wave numbers. So, the second question is what is the frequency of the 12th line in wave numbers. So, let us draw the 12th line. So, we have 9th line then the 10th, 11th, 12th. So, because everything is separated by 2 b. So, from 9th to 12th it is separated by 6 b or 60 wave numbers. So, we can say if 9th line is 180 wave numbers, then the 12th line will be 240 wave numbers. So, we can also get this answer in a different way. So, we have seen that the delta nu power j is 2 b times j plus 1. The 12th line comes from the transition from the 11th to 12th level. So, here j equals 11, thus delta nu bar j equals 2 b times 11 plus 1 that is 12 times 20 that is 240 wave numbers. Okay. So, now let us look into another problem. So, the next question that we have is for a diatomic molecule A B, the energy of the rotational transition from j equals 0 to j equals 1 state is 3.9 wave numbers. The energy of the rotational transition from j equals 3 to j equals 4 would be. So, this is a multiple choice questions we have four options. So, let us look into the problem again. So, j equals 0 let us draw the energy levels j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, j equals 4. So, what is given is from j equals 0 to j equals 1 the energy for the rotational transition. So, this is 3.9 wave numbers. So, we know this j equals 0 to 1, this is given by 2 b. So, 2 b equals 3.9 wave number. So, for j equals 3, the energy is 12 b and for j equals 4, the energy is 20 b. So, the energy required for this transition is 8 b. So, we have to find the energy for the rotational transition from 3 to 4. That means, we have to find what is the value of 8 b. So, if 2 b equals 3.9, very easily we can say 2 b times 4 that is 8 b equals 3.9 times 4 this is in wave numbers that is 15.6 wave numbers. So, this is our answer and this matches with the option D. So, let us look into another problem. This problem says the spacing of a series of lines in the microwave spectrum of age B r is 17 wave numbers. So, we have to find the internuclear distance or r. So, as we already know by now, we can write b equals h by 8 pi squared i c. We also know for a diatomic molecule, we can write i equals mu r square 
where mu is the reduced mass. So, we have to find the interdicular distance r and all we know is the spacing between a series of lines. So, we know the spacing is given by 2 b. So, 2 b equals 17 wave numbers or b equals 17 by 2 equals 8.5 wave numbers. So, we know the value of b. So, we can write i equals h by 8 pi square b times c. So, if we put the values h is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second divided by 8 times 3.14 squared. Then we put the value of b that is 8.5 centimeter inverse and the value of c as 3 times 10 to the power 10 centimeter inverse. So, this becomes 3.294 times 10 to the power minus 47 joule second squared. So, because joule is kilogram meter squared second to the power minus 2, then joule second squared equals kilogram meter squared. So, we can write this as 3.294 times 10 to the power minus 47 kilogram meter squared and this unit is right because we are finding out the value of i, i is moment of inertia that is mu r squared. So, if you look into the unit, this is kg, this is and r is distance kilogram meter squared. So, we found the right unit. Now, we have found the value of i. So, because i equals mu r squared. So, we can write r equals root over i by mu. So, we know the value of i, but we do not know the value of mu. So, let us find out the value of mu. So, mu equals 1 times 79 divided by 1 plus 79, the unit is gram per mole. So, we can write this as 1 times 79 divided by 1 plus 79 times 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram per mole. And because in 1 mole there are Avogadro number of molecules, so we can write this as 1 times 79 divided by 1 plus 79 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by the Avogadro number that is 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. So, if we do this calculation, what we will get is 1.649 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg. So, we now know the value of mu. So, we can write r that we need to find out is root over 3.294 times 10 to the power minus 47 divided by 1.649 six four nine times ten to the power minus twenty seven. So this becomes 
1.41 times 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So, that is 141 picometer. So, the answer is r equals 141 picometer. So, we should remember one thing in the last class we found out the bond length of H C L and that was 127 picometer. Today we found out the bond length of H B R and the bond length is 141 picometer. So, from the rotational data we can find out accurate bond lengths and we can see the bond length of H B R as expected is larger than the bond length of H C L.